My name is Thomas Matthew Crooks. I hate Republicans. I hate Trump. Hello again, party people, and welcome back. I thought I was done covering this case weeks ago, but I keep finding more stuff. Despite this, my views are weighed down, and I'm getting tired. So the videos might not be on the daily anymore. But check this out. Here is Dr. Liar when he arrived at the rally. Look at his hands talking. But who exactly is he talking to? Here is the exact shirt Dr. Liar was wearing. One of my viewers knew it was a Brooks Brothers shirt logo, and not a drone logo as I incorrectly said. And another viewer found the exact shirt for me. So thanks party persons. Now in previous videos, I said Dr. Liar was wearing a wire. I now think I'm wrong. Look at the string from his hat. Is this the string that I thought was a wire? Maybe. But maybe not. If this is the string from his hat, then why isn't it at the back of his hat like it was when he arrived? Why does the wire or string now come out from underneath his shirt? If that's a wire, then where is the string from his hat that we saw before? Was Dr. Liar fitted with a wire after he arrived? Another one of my viewers named Marty found Dr. Liar standing in the main crowd when the shots were fired. And in Dr. Liar's media interview, he said he knew the back area of the stage was wide open. How would he know this unless he was backstage before the rally? The COP Command Center is located in the backstage area. So if Dr. Liar is wearing a wire, was the doctor fitted with the wire in the COP Command Center that is located in the backstage area? Is this how Dr. Liar knew the backstage area was so open? You decide, party people. I'm honestly shocked this didn't happen earlier. Um, I was commenting to my friend and went with the to the event with me. I was like, you know, you know, the back behind the bleachers, it's really open. It seems like a really open venue. And it's just, you know, I, I got this sense that, you know, someone really wanted to do something. And again, I, I was openly talking to her. I was like, you know, if something was bad was going to be happen, this is the perfect venue to have. I just said this like an hour before it happened. I was like, this would be the perfect place to do it. Whether Dr. Liar is wearing a wire or not, how has he not been questioned by the police yet? He's claiming he was sitting in the left grandstand a few yards away from Corey. He's lying. He's in the main crowd. He also said that when he was in the grandstand, he was looking out into the crowd. Again, he's lying. He further said that while he was in the grandstand, the shots came from behind him. Party people, he's standing in the main crowd, pretending that he was in the grandstand, and he knew the shots came from the building. Oh, it was a dangerous and deadly situation. I, I, the problem is it's a large crowd, and when the gunshots went off, I think they were, again, my sense was they were being shot from behind, so they sounded a bit muffled, so it sounded more like a firecracker going off. So I think the initial reaction from the people around me were like, okay, well, someone brought fireworks. I, I just knew better. I know what gunshots sound like. So how, how soon did you know whether or not it was even, even safe? Did you want to get out of there? What, what did you witness in sort of the immediate aftermath once the shots stopped? Well, see, back to the shots went off, everyone thought it was a prank. Everyone, I think, got a sense. Like, when I looked out into the crowd, everyone thought, it, I think the initial reaction, everyone thought it was a prank. I knew better it was a gunshot because I just saw a guy got hit. Since he was standing in the main crowd, and if the shots came from behind him, as he said, then the shots didn't come from the building because the building isn't behind him when he was standing in the crowd. But this Democrat, who is attending a Republican rally, just knew where the shots came from. It's simply amazing. This Democrat doctor admits that this is the first time he attended a Trump rally. He said that this would be the perfect venue for a Trump shooting to happen. And he admits that he knew it was gunshots right away despite everyone else thinking that it was just firecrackers. News Nation has become a big media player, so what did they do to screen their guests? Why don't they re-interview Dr. Liar now? And joining us tonight right now is Dr. Joseph Mine, who I am told helped carry one of those who was injured out of that rally. Uh, Dr. Mine, thank you for being with us here on News Nation. Tell me tonight what you saw, uh, what you did, and how you jumped into action. Um, well, there was a, I was attending the rally. I was in the seated section in front of the 
bleachers on the far left of the uh, of the area of, of the rally area. So it'd be you know the very far right of where Doctor, or sorry, where Donald Trump was speaking from the podium, and you know okay. so. There was there was a jumbotron, so I was I was kind of I had an iPhone. I was running the video on Donald Trump at the podium, and you know I had to kind of move the iPhone over because the um, his teleprompter was in the way. So I, I didn't really get a good video of him, you know, in front of the you know at the podium. So I was kind of you know I was I was removing my 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 vision between what I was looking at between jumbotron and President Trump, and you know as I was running my camera president trump in my right hand i was looking over to the left at the jumbotron and that's when i heard the gunfire okay so i you know i heard seven shots rapid succession you know it was seven shots were fired probably within a second or two it was under mm-hmm. maybe a second and a half right. um the first few shots you know hit people and the bleachers that are right in front of me a man got a gunshot wound to the head and was killed instantaneously i mean it was mm-hmm. yeah, i mean it was a direct hit um, he immediately, his body immediately fell to the, uh, to the, into the bleachers. I didn't initially see anyone else get hit because, you know, as soon as I saw the man get shot in the head, I, I immediately looked back over because I immediately, I was, it was apparent that they're trying to kill the president. Like the rounds are coming from my right, my left to right and they're shooting at the podium. And as I looked to the right, I saw either the, the teleprompter that was, on Trump's right, it got hit, or it looked like it got knocked over. It was in the process of getting knocked over. That's when I noticed that President Trump got hit in the right ear. Like it looked like a piece of his ear got sliced off from one of the rounds. And you know, he had just looked to the left, and he had not done that. Um, you know, Donald Trump was a hair breadth away from being assassinated. Um, yet he had not looked to the left quickly. He would have had it. You know, he would have got hit directly in the head. Um, and you know, and immediately. The Secret Service jumped, you know, they jumped, pulled him down. But what's amazing to me is, like I said, right after those seven shots was how fast, you know, I, I, I don't know, if I, I didn't get a good look. I, I assume there was a there was a Secret Service sniper somewhere. But it amazes me. It amazed me. It was almost robotic how fast it was. Like, they returned fire. Yeah. Like, it was within yeah, a second. Instantaneously, I mean, yeah. you know, almost instantaneously, rounds are coming the other direction back to where the you know, going back to where the source of the original gunfire was. I mean, it was almost instantaneously. I mean, it was, I was absolutely amazed. Like, I know enough about, you know, because I own guns, I go hunting and I go shooting all the time. Um, you know, so I knew immediately it was gunfire, and I knew immediately I saw where the rounds were going, and it just amazed me how fast the Secret Service, you know, ans- you know returned fire. It was, I was absolutely right. done. Like, you know, it, it's kudos yeah. to them. Like, I, I, I don't know how they trained, but that is just, it's just amaz- amazing to me. Absolutely right. amazing to me. If you know yeah, anything no, about weapons, like, wow, yeah. So, 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 bo- so someone n- next to you or nearby was was struck, I believe. And, and tell me what happened then. So I wasn't in the bleachers. I, I jumped. I jumped the barrier to go in the bleachers that Brenda ate. So I was sitting right in front of the bleachers. So I saw people. I saw the. All I really saw was the man that was struck in the head, and you know, he was killed instantaneously. But. You know, so I, I, you know, I jumped the bleachers to try to run right. I mean, by the time I got there, there had already been, you know, uh, there had been like a SWAT team, and then there was like a physician EMT in there, and she had told me that the man was dead. So I, I, you know, I helped, you know, carry him out of the bleachers briefly until they took him around the corner, and then they took his body from behind the bleachers to a tent so they they could evaluate him more. I don't know what they were going to evaluate at that point. Um, you know, the most shocking thing to me was his entire family was there in the bleachers with him, and they watched oh. this whole thing come down. And, you know, as they were taking the body out, they put a towel over his head, and it was just soaked in blood. Oh. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if it was the sister or daughter, I don't know who it was, but it was, a, you know, maybe a 20, 30-year-old female, and she was hysterically crying, saying, is he going to be okay? And I just, I just remember someone saying, no, he's dead. And, you know, I, and in that, at that point in time, I, I jumped back to the barrier to go, so I could get out of there. Because I was, you know, it was just absolute pandemonium. Everyone was getting out of there. And, you know... I, I just can't stress you enough, you know, Donald Trump came a hair breadth, hair breadth away from being assassinated tonight. Um, you know, I, I watched that, and like I said, had he not turned his head at the last minute, yeah, you know, at that, that very moment, you know, he would have got hit in the head and he would be dead. Like, you know, it look, looked like to me like the round hit him in the ear and sliced off a section of his right portion of his ear. But, you and know, so, you know, he's lucky. He's a very lucky man. And so... You helped carry the body of the Briefly, individual yeah. who we, yeah. who was deceased. Did you see the others 
around you? Yeah, Do you know how, I, how they were possibly doing? So there was a woman that was in the bleachers. It looked to me like she had got, it looked to me like she had a gunshot. She had a thrown through gunshot wound, either a forearm or a hand. And as they were taking her down out of the bleachers, taking her medical systems, it looked to me like she had actually got hit in the chest and the round went through the chest and probably went through her hand. Um, and I don't know, like, I didn't, I didn't get to say anything. I told him, like, hey, look, I'm a doctor. Like, I can help. We don't need it. Like, we're taking her to the ambulance. She needs to get medevac. But, I, I, you know, I told him as they were training, I was like, I think he got, you know, a missile injury to the chest. And they were taking her to the triage to look. And, and all I know is life flight came shortly thereafter, and they flew people out. I only saw, I only saw one woman injured, and it looked like she had had a gunshot wound to the chest, and then she had got hit in the hand. Like, with the exit wound, like, it exited out the front and got her in the hand. But she was alive i mean it didn't look like it was super you know it didn't look like she was a critical i mean it right, looked like right. a critical injury she certainly she certainly wasn't dead so but they were taking her out to get her to life flight and that's you know at that point in time you know i collected my stuff and i was getting out of there so as b before we say good uh, b before we let you go here doctor i just final thoughts of just witnessing this as you did this evening you know, I, I work as a physician, so, you know, I, I take care of patients. And I, I you know, and I, I had stressed this to friends before. Um, there's a mental illness problem in this country, but it's not just a mental illness problem. It's a mental illness and there's an anger problem. Like, there's just a lot of angry people. And, you know, it, it just, it, it, it needs to stop. Um, yeah. You know, this, this political violence thing has gotten out of hand. I don't care if it's Antifa burning down cities. I don't care if it's people trying to assassinate donald trump it needs to stop um Doc it's, it's just th this is the most uncivil thing that you will ever witness in your life absolutely hands down in my mind now i showed you in my previous video that dr jim looked directly at dr liar before dr jim starts pointing down at Corey. dr jim knew exactly where dr liar was in the crowd party people and this is not a coincidence Coincidence? I think not! When the shots were fired, everyone around Dr. Jim looks over the grandstand towards the building. Everyone looks over except for Dr. Jim. Jim just keeps looking straight ahead like he doesn't know anything. This is not a coincidence either party people. When Dr. Jim starts walking over towards Corey, he's carrying a Trump sign. When Dr. Jim reaches this point, he dumps the sign. No true blue Trumpster would do this. Ever. Here is Dr. Jim after the shooting. Who is he talking to? This person wasn't standing next to Jim when Jim was standing up here in the grandstand before the shooting happened. After the shooting happened, Dr. Jim said a voice in his head told him to go help the people that were hurt including Corey. But why was Dr. Jim never asked by the media who he was looking at in the middle of the crowd when he was pointing down at Corey? Do you think both Dr. Jim and Dr. Liar should be re-interviewed and asked some real questions now that I've exposed some truthiness in this case? I sure do, and hope you do too. I'm sorry for the trouble. You're letting him go again? He's guilty! You can see it on his smug little face! Guilty! I say guilty! Guilty!